Hello everyone, welcome back again to my channel. Today's objectives are differentiate mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events. Find the probability of mutually exclusive events and find the probability of non-mutually exclusive events. But before we proceed to our topic, let us have these pictures. Can you perform the two actions at the same time, like diving or swimming on the swimming pool, at the same time eating your food, or driving your motorcycle at the same time reading your book? When the two events cannot happen at the same time, it is said to be mutually exclusive events. Let us illustrate the two events using Venn diagram. Our first event is drawing a queen and the second event is drawing an ace. Now observe the elements or the outcomes. Do you see common elements or common outcomes? If this is the case, there is no common outcomes. This is said to be as mutually exclusive events. In getting the P of A union B, when P of A and P of B are mutually exclusive, we follow the formula P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B. Take note of those symbols P of A union B denotes the probability of the union of two events happening. P of A denotes the probability of event A to happen and P of B denotes the probability of event B to happen. Let us have an example. A box contains paper cutouts of different shapes. What is the probability of getting a square or circle paper cut out if the box contains 9 rectangles, 4 triangles, 14 squares, and 8 circles paper cutouts? To solve this problem, you have to identify first the two events. The first is getting a square paper cut out, and the second event is getting a circle paper cut out. Then you have to identify the sample space of each event. For event A, that is 14 squares paper cutouts, and for event B, 8 circle paper cutouts. So those are the favorable outcomes for each event. And then you'll have to identify also the sample space or the total number of possible outcomes, and that is 35 paper cutouts because of 9 rectangles, 4 triangles, 14 squares, and 8 circles paper cutout. Next step is you are going to find the probability of each event. The probability of an event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes all over the total number of possible outcomes or in symbol P of E is equal to N of E over N of S. So the probability of drawing a square or the probability of the first event is equal to 14 over 35 since we have 14 square out of 35 paper cutouts and the probability of drawing a circle or the probability of event B is equal to 8 over 35 since we have 8 circle paper cutouts out of 35 paper cutouts. Since this is an example of a mutually exclusive event because they don't have common outcomes or common elements, so we will be using the formula P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B to find the probability of drawing a square or a circle paper cutouts. And since the probability of an event A is equal to 14 over 35, and the probability of event B is 8 over 35. We're going to combine the numerators and that is equivalent to 22 and copying their common denominators which is 35. Rewriting this 22 over 35 in decimal form or in percentage form, this is the same as 63 hundredths or 0 0.63 and 63%. Another example, find the probability of drawing a diamond card or spade card in a standard deck of 52 cards. We will also have the same process. The first step is, you are going to identify the events. So for event A, drawing a diamond card and event B, drawing a spade card. Then let us identify the sample space or the number of elements for event A. There are how many diamond cards and what are those? 
So those are Ace of Diamond, Two of Diamond, Three, Four, Five, Six, Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten of Diamond, Jack, Queen, King of Diamond. A total of 13 outcomes. For event B, the sample space is Ace of Spade, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of Spade, Jack, Queen, King of Spade. There are also 13 outcomes for this event. Second step is we're going to find the probability of each event. So the probability of drawing a diamond card or P of A is equal to 13 over 52 because we have 13 diamond cards out of 52 cards. And the probability of drawing a spade card is, or P of B, is equal to 13 over 52. And since these uh, events have no common outcomes or no the same elements, we will be using again the formula P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B. P of A and P of B, we have 13 over 52 and 13 over 52. Combining their numerators and copying their common denominators, we will arrive at 26 over 52 or simplifying this uh, fraction. This is the same as 1 half and rewriting this into decimal or percentage form. This is the same as 0.5 or 50%. Another example, find the probability of drawing a red face card or number card less than 5 in a standard deck of 52 cards. So first, let us identify the events for event A, drawing a red face card. In a standard deck of cards, we have two red cards, the diamond and hearts. For face cards, we are referring to jack, queen, and king. So the samples Base for event A is Jack of Heart, Queen of Heart, King of Heart, Jack of Diamond, Queen of Diamond, and King of Diamond. So we have here six elements or six outcomes for event A. Then event B is number card less than five. The number cards in a standard deck of cards are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, number card less than 5 are 4, 3, 2. And we have 4 suits in a standard deck of cards. Hearts, diamond, clubs, and spades. So, the number cards less than 5 are 4 of heart, 3 of heart, 2 of heart, 4 of diamond, 3 of diamond, 2 of diamond, 4 of spade, 3 of spade, 2 of spade, 4 of club, 3 of club and 2 of club. There are 12 elements or we have 12 outcomes for event B. And the sample space or the total number of cards in a standard deck of cards is 52. The next step is find the probability of each event. So the probability of drawing a red face card or our P of A is equal to 6 over 52. And, and the probability of drawing a number card less than 5 is, or P of B, is equal to 12 over 52. And since this is a mutually exclusive event because they don't have the same elements, therefore we're going to use again the formula P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B. P of A is 6 over 52 and P of B is 12 over 52. Combining the numerators and copying their common denominators, this is equal to 18 over 52. Simplifying the expression, 18 over 52, this is the same as 9 over 26 or the same as 0 0.35 or 35%. Look at these pictures. Can you perform the two actions at the same time, walking while combing your hair? If your answer is yes, this is an example of a non-mutually exclusive event. When two events can happen at the same time, it is said to be non-mutually exclusive events. Let us have the two events using the Venn diagram. On, on this circle, this is drawing a diamond and there are 13 elements from Ace of Diamond up to King of Diamond. 
On the second event, drawing a red base card, we have here the elements Jack King Queen of Diamonds and Jack Queen King of Hearts. If you're going to observe the two events, both have the same Jack, King, and Queen of Diamond. If the two events have the same elements or outcomes, that is a non-mutually exclusive event. Now, in getting the probability of A union B, when P of A and P of B are non-mutually exclusive, we will follow the formula P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. Always remember the symbols P of A union B denotes the probability of the union of the two events happening. P of A denotes the probability of event A to happen. P of B denotes the probability of event B to happen. And P of A intersection B denotes the intersection of the two events or the events happening at the same time. Let us have an example. We have a deck of cards and in order to win the game, we need to draw a hearts card or a king card. What are our chances of winning? So first, we have to identify the events for event A, drawing a hearts card and for event B, drawing a king card. And what is the sample space for event A and what are the elements of the sample space? Ace of heart, two of heart, three of heart, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, and king of heart. We have 13 elements or 13 outcomes for event A. Event B, what are the elements of the sample space? King of heart, king of diamond, king of spade, king of club. We have here four outcomes, four elements of the sample space in event B. If you're going to observe the elements in event A and event B, they have a common outcome, and that is a king of heart, one common outcome only. Next is, we're going to find the probability of each event for P of A or the probability of hearts. That is equal to 13 over 52 because we have 13 hearts card over 52 cards. And then the probability of event B or the probability of king card is equal to 4 over 52 because we have 4 elements for king cards out of 52. And then their intersection or the common outcomes that is equal to 1 over 52 and since this is a non mutually exclusive events because they have common outcomes we will be using p of a union b is equal to p of a plus p of b minus p of a intersection b and this is equal to p of a union b is equal to 13 over 52 this is the probability of event a plus 4 over 52 that's the probability of event b minus 1 over 52 that's the probability of a intersection b 13 plus 4 minus 1 so 13 plus 4 is 17 minus 1 so that's equal to 16 over their common denominators so that is equal to p of a union b is equal to 16 over 52 Reducing this to lowest term is equal to 4 over 13. So our chances of winning is 4 over 13 or 0.31 or 31%. Example 2. A box contains 20 tickets numbered 1 to 20. If a ticket is drawn at random, what is the probability that the number is a multiple of 4 or greater than 10? First, we have to identify the events. And for event A, that is getting a number that is a multiple of 4. And what are those numbers that is a multiple of 4 from 1 to 20? Those are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And we have here 5 possible outcomes. Or there are 5 elements of the sample space in event A. Next, event B is getting a number that is greater than 10. And what are those numbers greater than 10 from 1 to 20? Those are 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And there are 10 possible outcomes for event B. Or there are 10 elements of the sample space in event B. Then observe its elements in each sample space for each event. Do you see common elements or common outcomes? 
Yes, so the common elements are 12, 16, 20. There are three common elements. And again, the total number of possible outcomes or the sample space is 20. After identifying each event at the same time, there are possible outcomes for each event and their common elements and the sample space, we are going to find the probability of each event. So the probability of event A is equal to 5 over 20 and the probability of event B is equal to 10 over 20 and the probability of the A intersection B is equal to 3 over 20. Then we're going to use the formula P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B because the two events are said to be non-mutually exclusive events because they have common outcomes. So, substituting all the values in our given formula, we will arrive at P of A union B is equal to 5 over 20 plus 10 over 20 minus 3 over 20 and performing the operations, we will arrive at 12 over 20. Simplifying 12 over 20, that is equal to 3 over 5. Thank you for watching and learning with me. I hope you learned from our lesson today.